In this video, we're going to talk about subgroups. So what do subgroup means? Well, we can have a couple of varieties here. Let's do C4, H10. This led to two possibilities. There was the straight chain, and there was the branched, where we had a CH3 coming off of that center. So this was CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3, and the lower one was CH3, 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 H. These molecules are reasonably different. They have different structures, different shapes. They'll have different properties. Well, for one of these, there's one, two, three carbons in a chain, and there's one, two, three, four carbons in a chain. These two molecules have different longest chains. Now the bottom one has the same number of carbons, but that carbon down below isn't part of the chain. We say it's a subgroup. The longest continuous line of carbons is only three for this bottom molecule. And when we go to name our molecules, remember to name it, the first part of the naming is the long main chain. This is the longest chain for alkanes. When we have other functional groups, it'll be the one that connects those functional groups. But since we don't have anything other than our hydrocarbon, the longest chain is the one we use for alkanes. So in one of these cases, that's four. And in one of those cases, it's three. So our upper name is just butane, but for being four, ane for being an alkane. In our lower example, well, it's only three long, so it's going to be a prop. The second part of our name was our functional group, which we said they're alkanes, so our second part is ane. However, there's still a carbon there. There's this extra carbon, because regular propane, regular propane would just be three carbons long. Having that extra carbon come off it means there's an extra thing, and I have to describe it. I have to tell what that extra thing is. For that, we need to identify what atom it's on. So when you have a chain, start from one end and call it number one. And then just number down the chain, two, three. We said our long chain was three long, and so either end you can start from, in this case, we'll put that extra carbon on the second carbon. So I have to tell you that there's an extra carbon on position two. And so we actually use that in the naming. We say, hey, it's on the second carbon. So we write a two dash. And now I have to tell you what it is. Well, it's a carbon chain. How many carbons long is the extra? Well, it's only a single carbon. And single carbons are meth. And so it is a meth, but I have to tell you it's a subgroup, that it's not part of the main chain. And subgroups have their own suffix. It's YL. And so it is a meth ill, two methyl propane. So lower right here, we have just regular propane. If I want that extra methyl coming off, or the extra carbon coming off the second position, it becomes a 2-methyl propane. This is how we indicate when there are carbons that aren't part of the main chain, that they're attached to the main chain. Let's try this again for... Let's try it for this molecule. And so our first job is to identify the longest path. Now let's pick any starting point and say, all right, here's carbon one, two, 
three. And now I have choices. If I go down below, that gives me a fourth and a fifth. If instead I went to the right, that gives me a fourth, a fifth, and a sixth. Sixth is going to be the longest I can make this chain. And so this is going to be some form of hex for its longest chain. It's an alkane, so it's going to be some form of hexane. But I've got extra carbons. How many extra carbons? Well, two. There is a two long chain of carbons that are extra. And so because it is too long, we go back and look at our naming. Two long chains are eth chains. So this is some form of eth. Because it is a subgroup, it is an ethyl. This is going to be an ethyl subgroup. Well, how do we number it? We have to figure out the numbering on our chain up here. And we have two choices. You can start from the left or you can start from the right. If I start from the right, it is one, two, three. It'll be carbon four before I reach it. If instead I had started from the left, it'd be one, two, three. Well, that gives us a different number depending on which side we start numbering from. You always want your subgroup to be as low a number as possible for the first subgroup you run into. Now we'll talk about having multiple subgroups later, but we have just the one right now, and I have the choice to make it either at the four carbon or at the three carbon. It will be at the three carbon. So we will number from the left to the right. And so this becomes a 3-ethyl, three 3-ethyl three hexane. So this is a 3-ethyl hexane. Let's give a practice. Give those three a try and see if you can solve their names with their subgroups and then come on back. All right, well, if you gave it a shot, we gotta find the longest chain and as drawn, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is a hex again and it's a hexane. So hex for six being the longest carbon chain, ane for being an alkane, and I've got an extra carbon that's not part of the chain. It's only one long. It's going to be some kind of meth, and then yl for being a subgroup, so methyl. And numerically, it's at the one, two, it's at the three position. So this is three methyl hexane. We always put the subgroups out front. So to reiterate back to our naming, we have our main, we have our functional group, and if we have subgroups, our subgroups go in front. If we try that for our next molecule, well I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Despite being drawn in a slightly different fashion, this is still a hexane. It's still six carbons long. It also has a one carbon subgroup, but this time it's at the one, two position. So this is a two methyl hexane. Now, if I had drawn it to look like the top one, two, three, four, five, six, it would have just looked like that. So that would be a closer to the zigzag drawing we saw for our first molecule there. 
But remember, the zigzag is just a handy way. You can have your chains kind of loop back around. They take up more space in your paper, so we don't see them as often that way. But the trick is we counted to find the length of that chain. Both cases, this top one and this lower one, they are six long. And so they are hexanes. Our next molecule, well, in this case, I've got a couple directions to look for. One, two, three, four. And if I go to the left, five, six, seven. And if I go to the right, five, six, seven, eight. And if I tried to go across the top, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I actually have multiple directions that give me the same numbering. So multiple different ways could give me eight. When that's the case, I try to see if any of them put my subgroups at different positions. In this case, they don't, however. It'll still be one, two, three, four. And if I'd come from below, it would have been one, two, three, four. So no matter how I go about numbering it, I'm going to have the same three carbon group on position four of an eight carbon chain. It's an eight carbon chain. So this is an oct for being eight. It is an octane for being an alkane. And it has a three carbon on position four. So this becomes a four propyl, there's no spaces, so fill these in. It is a 4-propyl octane. So that's the basics of subgroup naming. And we'll talk about multiple subgroups in another video, but in this case, this is how you identify where a subgroup is on your main chain and how you describe the length of that subgroup. It uses the same methyl, ethyl, propyl, and so on as the main chain naming, but you use YL to identify that you're talking about the subgroup. You then put those in front, and so as early examples are propane versus R2-methylpropane.